When drawing the ball, we've all done this. And then we do this. What in the world? Is it really the chalk's fault? Can we figure out the cause of this miscue? How to stop it and draw more consistently? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. I have always been a why person. It's not enough for me to just know how to do something. I need to understand the why of it. Let's compare two draw shots. First, on top is a normal draw shot. Then below, what looks like the same stroke results in a miscue. Did you catch the difference? Let's look again in slow motion. The red line marks the plane of the shaft, which is stroked fairly consistently on the backstroke and cue delivery. Now look at the miscue. Did you see that? Comparing frame by frame, you can see that on the miscue, the tip dips just a bit more just before impact. It actually contacts the table at or before contacting the cue ball. The shot that doesn't miscue dips just a little bit, but it definitely contacts the cue ball, and then the tip is driven down into the cloth. When the tip rebounds off the cloth, the cue ball is long gone. These images show that the only part of your tip that contacts the cue ball during a draw shot is along the very edge. So be sure to chalk the edge of your tip carefully before a draw shot. But is there a way to prevent this tip dip just before contact with the cue ball? With experimentation, I was able to produce a miscue on demand. So I believe there is. A quick review of the pendulum stroke is in order. My video on proper pool cue length explains the pendulum in detail. There's an optimal grip position for your cue depending on the length of your bridge. Note the length of my bridge on this shot, and my grip hand is at or just behind 90 degrees. There's no miscue and a fairly good draw stroke. Compare to this shot with the same bridge length, but this time my grip hand is a little bit forward of 90 degrees. What happened? If the grip is forward of 90 degrees at a dress, when the Q-tip is moving towards the cue ball, your grip will rise even higher, causing the tip to dip down and contact the cloth in front of the cue ball, creating a miscue. Compare to this image of the good stroke where the cue ball is already gone, but the grip hand has only just now reached the starting position of the miscue stroke. I've covered elbow drop in other videos, so we'll only mention briefly that dropping your elbow is not needed and at worst is detrimental. Despite what some pros might say, your most accurate draw stroke will be performed with no elbow drop. For those interested, I invite you to check out this video. Despite pro Mike Massey, who arguably possessed the most powerful stroke of his day, explaining how he drops his elbow, the presenter demonstrate how Mike's elbow is not a factor. In general, shots struck softly are best executed with a shorter bridge. Your own personal shot triangle, the distance from your bridge to grip, does not change for any shot. Most shots played with a medium speed use your standard bridge length and corresponding grip position, always keeping the grip hand at or just behind 90 degrees to the cue stick. So it makes sense that the power draw shot, which we want to hit very forcefully, should be played with a longer bridge and corresponding grip position closer to the end of your cue stick. In theory, the longer bridge gives you more time to accelerate the cue stick to a faster speed at cue ball contact. But let's look closer. Your best draw stroke will be produced when you strike the cue ball with perfect timing. Timing means your best combination of a level cue stick, tip location, and maximum speed at cue ball contact. Often we will strike the ball well, but less than optimal. I didn't catch it all. But when your timing is perfect, oh, baby. We're home. you will know. Level Q is a bit of a misnomer. For both of these shots, my Q is not level to the table, but is as level as possible because you cannot stick a piece of chalk between the rail and my shaft. In both cases, the back end of my Q stick rises at the back of the backstroke. Returning to a dress position, can you guess which stroke will be more successful? On top, my grip hand is in front of 90 degrees, 
while on the bottom, it's at 90 degrees. Compare the moment before cue ball impact. On top, my grip hand is already rising, while on the bottom, the grip hand will still be very close to level at cue ball impact. Keeping your cue stick as level as possible at address in conjunction with proper grip hand location not only reduces miscues, it means you can be confident that your tip location at address will be the precise tip location at cue ball impact. Practice aiming as low as possible in this fashion, and you just might be surprised at how low you can address the bottom of the cue ball without miscuing. The third ingredient of timing, and the most interesting, is speed. The harder you hit the cue ball, the more draw you will get, right? Well, maybe. When the cue tip strikes the cue ball, it imparts two types of energy, directional energy and rotational energy. Directional energy means the cue ball will have momentum and travel in the direction your cue stick was pointed at the moment of impact. This energy transfer occurs no matter where you strike the cue ball. Rotational energy means the cue ball will spin either around its horizontal axis, in the case of side spin, or vertical axis, in the case of follow or draw, or a combination of both. With a draw shot, it is the rotational energy that causes the cue ball to come back after contact with the object ball. Though an object ball is not required, the cue ball will come back whenever the rotational energy causes enough friction with the cloth to overcome its directional energy. Here's an example. So when we use a long bridge to help hit the power draw shot harder, we are not necessarily trying to increase the cue ball's directional energy. No, we're trying to increase the cue ball's rotational energy. Here is a draw shot played with good rotational energy. And again in slow motion. Notice the cue ball is spinning rapidly after contact with the object ball but the rotational energy quickly slows due to friction with the cloth and then becomes directional energy back towards the shooter. The cue ball is now rolling instead of spinning. By the way, here's a draw shot with some side spin. With some of the energy of your stroke imparting side spin to the cue ball, that energy cannot be used for rotation purely around the vertical axis of the cue ball, robbing your draw of some power. Now here is a draw shot played with even better rotational energy. Notice the cue ball is spinning after contact, but takes longer for the friction to grab the cloth, if you will, resulting in what looks like a second burst of speed after leaving the object ball. Good timing means the best possible speed at the very lowest point on the cue ball, struck precisely on the vertical axis, with the most level cue, to impart the most rotational versus directional energy to the cue ball. So how do you get the most speed from your Q-tip at impact besides muscling up and hitting it as hard as you can? The answer is technique. Consider this train traveling from point A to point B at a constant speed. Now, what if the train instead traveled the same speed but on top of another train also traveling the same speed? it would get to point B twice as fast. This concept is similar to what happens at the end of a whip. The whip is traveling one speed, but then throws the tip forward, resulting in a quick burst of speed just at the tip of the whip. You are not going to be able to throw your cue forward at the speed of sound. But what if we could use a technique like this to increase our cue tip speed just before impacting the cue ball? Well, you can, and it's done with a loose wrist. Practice without a cue stick by letting your arm hang straight down and let your hand wiggle loosely at the wrist. This is all that is needed. You do not use your muscles to flex or flip your wrist. As your forearm moves backwards on the backstroke, just let your wrist loosely lag behind as the force of gravity pulls on your grip hand and cue. When your arm comes to a stop, your hand and cue will have some momentum that causes them to continue. Then, when you begin to move your forearm forward, your hand and cue will lag behind, simply due to your wrist being loose. As your arm approaches cue ball impact, your hand and cue will naturally begin to catch up 
and whip forward without any conscious muscle contraction on your part. This demo video is an exaggeration of the movement. I want to stress that you do not want to get carried away with this movement. There is no physical effort required to flip your wrist forward. Rather the opposite. You want your wrist to be relaxed and loose. Let it happen naturally. As you practice your power draw stroke, technique is more important than power. I really like this practice routine because it begins simply and helps you to refine your technique before you advance to more difficult strokes. Begin with an object ball near the first diamond and the cue ball near the second diamond. Your goal is to draw the cue ball back to within one ball diameter of the opposite short rail. Here the cue ball hits the short rail but bounces too far up. My next shot ends up a little bit short. Remember, the point isn't to see if you can do it just one time. The point is to pay attention as you refine your technique. Your levelness of cue is dictated by your grip position and associated bridge length, tip location both on the vertical and horizontal axis of the cue ball, and speed of stroke with looseness of the wrist. Finish each stroke with your cue tip on the table as you observe the rotational energy of the cue ball. Do not get overzealous about moving the cue ball back to a more difficult position. This drill is about refining your technique. You're only going to have success with the longer power draw stroke if you've refined your technique and smoothness on these shorter distance shots first. Build up your progress incrementally. The nice thing about editing these videos is I don't have to show you all my misses and bad strokes. If you find yourself having trouble with the cue ball from a certain distance, move the cue ball closer and continue to refine your technique. Earn the right to back the cue ball up with three successful executions in a row. I hope you've gained some good tips about how to avoid miscuing on the power draw stroke and how to really refine and improve your technique. Remember to be patient with yourself. There's always more to learn. For example, some of the topics I didn't discuss in this video are a strong stance, standing taller for a more powerful draw stroke, and the benefits of a slow and smooth backstroke. Stay tuned for more tips in future videos. Thanks for watching and good luck!